Hi folks, we're going to take a look at questions 4 and 5 from the uh, extra review questions for Unit 4. I'm going to do them together because they really are essentially the same problem in many ways. Okay, so first thing we notice in both of these is you have two different trig ratios that are set to be equal. Okay, and in this case here, the equality is between the positive version of one and the negative version of the other, similarly here. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one here. So we see that cosine of some angle is the negative sine of this angle, 3 pi over 7. Okay, so I can do this by figuring out the relationship on a Cartesian plane, but since you have access to your, um, to your formula sheet, okay, let's take a look at the formula sheet. So let's determine where cosine is equal to negative sine. Okay, so we have here, cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus some angle is equal to the negative of the sine of that angle. So this one here will be a relationship we could use. And the other one that we can use is this one here. That cosine of pi over 2 plus an angle is negative sine of that angle. Okay, so these are two correlated identities that we're going to use. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So if I refer to, if I think of you know, 3 pi over 7 as being my angle theta, then it means that A needs to be equal to, well, either pi over 2 plus theta. Now, notice here they are asking us for two answers, and so this is why I'm going to use both of them. Or I could have A also equaling 3 pi over 2 minus theta, okay? These are the two relationships in, in which a cosine value is equal to the negative of a sine value. Okay, so that means that A has to be equal to pi over 2 plus theta, but in this case here my theta is 3 pi over 7, and so now I can just calculate A directly. So I'm going to put everything over 14, so this is 7 pi over 14 plus uh, 6 pi over 14, so 13 pi over 14 is one answer. Okay, now if you think about it here, 3 pi over 7 is in the first quadrant, so sine of that is going to be positive. Okay, and I look at A, the first one I found, well this is in the second quadrant, it's a little less than uh, pi, and so it makes sense that it's going to give me a negative cosine value. Okay, so the other option that I can look for is uh, 3 pi over 2 minus theta, which in this case here again is 3 pi over 7. Okay, and so now, again, similarly, multiply top and bottom by 7. So we've got 21 pi over 14 minus 6 pi over 14. And so here we have 15 pi over 14. Okay, and in this case here, this is in the third quadrant. It's just a little more than pi. So it makes sense that the cosine value would be a negative number. Okay, just as the right-hand side of the equation is. So we're going to do something very similar in number 5. Now here, it's a secant value that's the negative of a cosecant, okay? But essentially, this is the exact same relationship that we're looking at here because the reciprocals of um, numbers don't change signs. So here, this is like saying, when is a cosine value equal to the negative of a sine value? And it's in the exact same scenario, is uh, at pi over 2 plus theta or 3 pi over 2 minus theta. So if I call this thing here theta, then this expression in the brackets uh, has to be equal to either pi over 2 plus theta or 3 pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, in other words, if we think of this as being something in the first quadrant, then this is going to be either in the second or the third. Okay, so now let's do the same thing here, except the only difference is between these two is the expressions are more complex. Okay, so here I'll start with 3a minus pi over 4 being equal to pi over 2 plus theta, so pi over 2 plus. Well, remember I'm calling this angle here my theta, so 4a minus pi over 4. Since I'm doing an addition, I don't necessarily have to put brackets, but I certainly could. Okay, and let's solve this here. It's just a linear equation. So let's bring the 3a three three to the other side. So we have a is equal to uh, negative pi over 4 uh, minus pi over 2. And then bring this to the other side plus pi over 4. And this works out nicely because these uh, add up to 0. So a is just equal to negative pi over 2. 
Okay, so here's one answer. They did ask us for two answers. Okay, uh, and the second one now, I'll use a second uh, relationship. So here, 3a minus pi over 4 needs to be equal to 3 pi over 2 minus my theta, which is this here. Now, because I'm doing a subtraction, I better put brackets or else I risk making a silly mistake. Okay, so here, 3a minus pi over 4 equals 3 pi over 2 minus 4a plus pi over 4. Okay, so I'll bring that to the other side. So we've got 7a is equal to, well, let me put everything over 4. So this is going to be 6 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. And then bring that to the other side plus another pi over 4. So 7a is equal to 6, 7, 8 pi over 4, which is just equal to 2 pi. And so a is just equal to 2 pi over 7. Okay, so here are my two answers that I was able to achieve. Okay, so again, reminder of how to solve these types of problems is first of all to recognize that when you have these equalities between different uh, trig ratios, you're likely going to be working with your correlated identities, okay, and determine which one fits the circumstance. Okay, that's it for these.